Are you looking for gorgeous cards to make this Christmas? In this video, I'm going to share with you my best tips on how to create these gorgeous cards using layered stencils. Hi there, I'm Julie. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to create four beautiful Christmas cards and the star of the show is this awesome stamp set right here. It is called Thoughtful Hollies and a look at this flower cluster. It is absolutely gorgeous. Now we have coordinating thin cuts and we have these awesome stencils to color in this beautiful image. I'm going to bring in an old friend from last year. So if you have anything in your stash that has a sprig, we're going to add those to pretty up our cards. The products on my desk here are going to help me create those four beautiful cards. I have two sheets of mix-in, lots of beautiful colors. Let's get into it. Let's go through quickly the cards and the pieces that you will need. This is for card number one and as you can see I was very frugal with how I selected my pattern paper for this workshop and you can actually make 16 cards. Now you don't have to make 16 cards but you can. So this is going to be the pieces for card number one and we are going to do some gold embossing. It looks so so good. We're going to move on to card number two and here you can see that I've brought another die which is from the all-purpose tags. Now if you don't have this one here I will link that information down below. This one will also be done with gold embossing powder. And then we're going to move on to card number three. Again just minimal pieces here. We're going to stamp that with intense black because we are going to stencil on all these gorgeous colors and then for card number four you'll see that this here is actually the branding strip. Now I tried my very best to do 16 cards but I did run out for the fourth card of design number four. If you actually want to make four you'll need to finish it all off with the branding strip right here. We're going to start with card number one. I'm going to stamp this gorgeous image on the card front. So I'm going to go ahead here and I am going to fold that in half. I'm going to use mist ink to create this background and we're just going to go ahead and stamp. What I'm trying to do here is to stamp the entire background with this one image. Now I don't want to overlap this image so you will be able to do this by rotating your stamp and you'll see here that I'm turning it ever so slightly and it does fit pretty closely without having to do any masking because we definitely want this process to go faster. So you saw here that I really rotated that image so that it would fit and when you're trying to stamp here in the center you'll see that I'm struggling here. I'm trying to make it fit. Just rotate your card and then you can kind of get a different perspective. You should be able to cover up all of this panel right here. There will be a few gaps but that's not going to matter because we are adding another image right here on the top. Now that all the pretty stamping is done, we're going to reach for the mist ink and we're going to create a beautiful vignette all around the card front. And I'm just tapping off the extra ink but you can see that it looks really good and it will dry back quite a bit. We're going to set that to the side and we're going to work on our featured image which is the one where we're going to stamp and stencil and then we're going to add gold embossing and it's going to look so so good. So the first thing you have to do is put your white piece of cardstock in your misty. Make sure that it's nice and snug in the corner and we're going to go ahead here and we're going to stamp that with mist ink. Now the reason we're doing that is just to help us when we do the stenciling with all of the colors. Now the most important thing is to leave your image in your misty door. Do not move it because we need to come back and stamp again with the Versamark so that we can emboss this great image. So let's color that in with the stencils and you'll see that it's actually easy and it's all layered up and it looks so so pretty. 
So we're going to start with the holly leaves and I'm going to start here with Seabrook and I'm just going to add it at the tip. And don't be afraid to lift your stencil and look if you're on track because it can shift a tiny little bit. You can see here that it moved a little bit. So I'm just kind of checking to make sure that I'm not going off the lines and I'm adding the color where I want the color to be. And this Seabrook color looks really, really good because this flower is going to be white. So we're starting with the lightest um, example, if you want, of these four cards. Now the next one here is the little berries and those are done in mist. And I just went ahead with a really light touch. Again, I'm trying to see if I've lined up my stencil correctly. And now I'm going to go in a little bit more heavy handed and I'm kind of going up. If you can see, I'm adding a bit of a shadow. So I'm pressing a little bit more and adding a little bit more color to those berries. And I think that that looks really, really good. So you can do a little bit of shading. It's not necessary, but you can if you want to. So the last stencil that we're going to use for this one here is the center. And you saw that I picked up my brush with the acorn ink and I didn't add a whole bunch to it. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to brush up so that there's a little bit of a shadow at the bottom and that's all you need. It doesn't need a lot of ink. So now we're going to take our image and we're going to bring back our Misty and hopefully you remembered to keep your image in the door because it's not going to work otherwise. And we're going to re-stamp this but before I do that I'm going to season my panel and make sure that you season it well especially if there's ink and it's not dry. The embossing powder will stick to it. So my Versamark here is not very juicy, so I have to kind of go back a few times, but I'm not pressing hard. Like I'm really, I'm tapping down on this image because if you squeeze that in, you're really going to distort the image. It's not going to look right because it is very, very dainty. So I've gone twice here and I think that that's going to be enough. I'm going to bring in my trusty coffee filter and I'm just going to add a little bit of gold embossing powder. And I think that that's what makes it look so Christmassy. It is so, so pretty. So I'm just going to tap that all around and you'll see that with just a little bit of gold, that flower comes to life. So we're just going to tap that extra off and we're going to give it a little flick and I think we're good. I'm just going to move that out of the way because I tend to make a mess if I don't do that right away. So I'm just going to clear my desk and I'm going to heat set that. And that gold with the white flower is so, so pretty. I hope that the camera is picking up on that gorgeous gold around this image. It looks so, so pretty done up with gold embossing powder. So the next thing we have to do is pull out our die and die cut this image and assemble the card. I really love the way this looks. It's so soft and the colors are just so pretty together. We're going to uh, start with the bottom right here. We're going to add our pattern paper and our shimmer trim only because it's going to help me position my sentiment. I will add some splatters with the Kuretake paints. These are metallic paints. If you don't have those, you can definitely use your shimmer brush, but I just find that the metallic paints show up a little bit more. I'm going to use my trusty fan brush right here, and we're going to add some gold splatters to make this card even more festive. And uh, I find that when you use a fan brush, it just goes really, really fast and you get nice and even splatters. So we're going to do that and uh, I'll give you a peek once I'm all done. It looks good. So let's take a peek. Isn't that pretty? With all that gold, it instantly makes this into a beautiful Christmas card. Now, don't be afraid to bring back your Misty to stamp your sentiment. I find that with the layers and especially with the metallic paints, I needed to use my Misty just to give it 
to pass with the ink. So I'm going to stamp my sentiment right here and I am using pine ink and I'll go twice just to make sure that I have a nice crisp impression on my card. So don't be afraid to bring it back and take a little bit more time and stamp using your Misty right here. So you'll see that I'm going once and then I'm going to go one more time and that gives it just that nice deep pine color that you're looking for. Okay now for the fun part we are going to assemble this card and all of them are assembled pretty much the same way. I've used 3D foam tape on the floral image right here and you can see that it fits really really nicely on that card. I'm going to add a few sprigs just to jazz it up a tiny little bit and I'm just tucking them underneath on the foam tape so that way it makes it a little bit easier. So for this one right here I'm going to snip that in half and I'm just going to use a smaller one at the bottom. Don't get rid of that one. We can use it for card number two and I'm just going to place that right here. And I think that that looks really, really good. And the beauty of this is that you can kind of move them before you position everything down on your card panel. Now the last thing we'll do is add a little sparkle and shine. And I really like the clear sparkles. And I often put them right by the sentiment just to highlight the sentiment. And I think you'll agree that it's just the right amount of sparkle for this card. So this is the completion of card number one. We're going to move on to card number two. We're going to take our four by four piece here and we're going to sneak it right in the corner. Make sure that it's nice and snug. We're going to add our image very much like card number one because we are going to do gold embossing for this card too. Now we're going to start with sage ink right at the tip. So I like to start lightly, like a light touch, just to make sure that my stencil is positioned correctly, and it is. We're going to move here to pine, and I'm going to give it a little bit of dimension. So again, you can see that I'm realigning my stencil just ever so slightly to make sure that it's in the right location and I'm going to add that really nice pine color right at the edge of the flower and it just gives that a lot of dimension. We're going to move on here and use mist and those are going to be for the berries and you can see that I didn't go into my ink right away. Again I'm testing to make sure that my stencil is at the right location and then I can go back with a heavier hand and add more color. Here I'm kind of brushing up just to give the berries a little bit of dimension at the bottom. They would be a little bit darker and I think that that looks really really great. Now for the flowers themselves, we're going to do them in red and these ones here, we're going to concentrate the red in the center. So I went ahead and I added a little bit of red everywhere and you can see that I'm realigning my stencil just to make sure that it's hitting all the right spots. And then I'm going to add more ink towards the center. So I'm going to concentrate the red in the center and it's going to fade into a lighter shade. So that takes a little bit more time but it's really easy with these layered stencils. So you can see that I've got more red right in the center and then I'm just fading out to a lighter red color. Now right now it doesn't look like much because don't forget we're going to come back and we are going to do gold embossing for this one here. So I brought some acorn color and I did go with a heavy hand and you can see that it's dark. Now one thing you have to be mindful of before you do your embossing, this has to dry completely. Otherwise the embossing powder is going to stick to the ink. So it gives us a good opportunity here to start working on the base. And I did do some ink distressing on the pattern paper, just like direct to ink pad. I'm just rubbing that ink right on. It just gives it a little bit more definition. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for those pieces because that's going to need to dry. 
And then we're going to bring back our mist and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a little bit of distressing or a little bit of ink blending if you want at the top left and the bottom right. And I just find that it gives a nice base to the flower to sit on. It's a really nice contrast with the blue. We're going to add our pattern paper. This one goes right in the middle and so does this one right here. Let's not forget to do some splatters. So we're going to splatter with some gold paint. Again, if you don't have this gold paint, you can definitely use a shimmer brush. I just find that the splatters here kind of show up a little bit more when you use gold paint. So now our flower is nice and dry. I'm going to bring back my Misty and hopefully you did not remove your stamped image. Make sure you're in the right orientation. You're going to go nice and snug in the corner. Add quite a bit of anti-static powder just to make sure nothing sticks to your image and then we're just going to heat set that gold powder and look at the details now. Isn't that gorgeous? It instantly looks like Christmas to me. It is so so pretty. So we're going to add this to the card. Before I do that I'm going to add my little pennant right here. I'm going to stamp that using pine ink and then we are going to add our flower very much like the first one. So all of the flowers have been popped with 3D foam tape and then I just add the little sprigs directly on the back side and pop that right on the card. I'm mindful that my sprigs are now sticking out from the card and then I finish it all off with a couple of sparkles and I think that this card looks pretty great. Look at all the shimmer and shine. So these are the two cards that we started with and they are done with gold embossing powder. So we're going to move on to card number three and these have been stamped with black intense ink and I did use my misty so you'll have to go in like a couple of times just to get a nice clean impression and we're going to do the stenciling very much like all of the other cards so I'm going to skip a few steps here I'll just show you the differences so this one here the berries are red and I've gone ahead and kind of tested to make sure that my stencil was correctly positioned and now I'm going to add a little bit more intensity and you can see how pretty they are. We're going to go right into the center with a little bit of acorn and just make that center pop. All right, let's have a little fun with some stickles here. This is so shiny. And if you don't have this one, you can also use this one right here. So we are going to make that white flower even more Christmassy. So I'm just going to add that right on top. And here too, you really need to let that center ink dry where we added the acorn color because it, it can bleed when you add your stickles. But once it's nice and dry, there should be no problem at all. I wanted to share a little bit of information with you. When I first cleaned off my stenciled, I used this totally awesome cleaner, which has a lot of ammonia, and it created a film on my stencil. Like, I thought that I had damaged my stencil, and I actually thought that maybe there was a protector film on this stencil. There isn't, but the harshness of the cleaner that I was using created a haze and it was like really sticky and I thought that I had ruined my stencil so I had to go back and really rub off that layer that it created and uh, my stencils were good to go so you can see here that my shimmer looks really pretty but we're gonna have to um, let this dry completely before we move on we can definitely start working on our bases right here and if you are doing the workshop and you're doing four cards at a time this is where you would set this aside and then you would start working on your next card so very much like all of the other cards, we're adding some mist to the background. We are starting on the left and we are working our way to the right and we are fading out to the right. You're not going to see the harshness of the inking on the left hand side because it's going to be covered by pattern paper. 
So this is where, when you make these cards, if you're doing four, you would set these aside and you will let this dry completely. Especially if you're using paint, you can see that these ones, the splatters are quite big. So I'm going to have to let those dry and I'm going to have to let this dry as well. So this is where, when you're doing this workshop, if you're doing four of the same cards, you could set these aside and move on to card number three. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so we're in the home stretch. We're going to do card number four, and these are the pieces we need for card number four, and we're going to do some stenciling. I've already stamped this in intense black, and I'm going to do the stenciling. Now, I'm not sure if you've picked up on this, but I did do them in a specific order. I started with the two that had to be embossed at the beginning. And then for these last two, I did the white one first where I use the stickles because this has to dry. We all know that. And I'm finishing it off with red. This last flower here is going to be done in red and I'm going to add quite a bit of ink. And I find that when you do them in this particular order and you clean your, st your stencil really, really nicely, you're not going to contaminate the colors between the white crisp flower and the red flowers. Now, if you do contaminate them, you'll end up with a pinky hue, which is not a bad thing for a flower. But if you want to keep them nice and white and red, this is the order that made the most sense for me. So I was starting with the lightest shade and I was working my way up. So the last flower is the one we're going to apply the most red to. And very much like the other ones, I started with the holly leaves, which are done in sage and pine. And then here I'm coming in with the acorn color. And I do find that this color looks like gold. So we're going to add a little bit of stickles to make that even more a thing. So you can see that the card number two, we did do the red, but the red was more in the center. This one here, I'm going to do the reverse and I'm going to do the red on the outer edges. So I'm going to give it a first pass just to make sure that I've got my color and my stencil positioned exactly where I want it. I'm going to take a little peek and it looks good. So now I'm going to start to really build on the edges of this flower and you'll see that I go back many, many times because I want this one to be really, really vibrant. So here you've got your two flowers. They're pretty much done. You could stop here, but I've learned this trick from Chelsea where if you create a secondary mask, you can actually separate the two flowers. So the flower on the top definitely would cast a shadow on the one at the bottom. So I did create a quick little mask here and I'm just going to add more ink and see that? it instantly separates those two images. Now this is completely optional, but I think that it looks really good. I'm gonna go back and add a lot more red because I want this one here to be really, really vibrant. So I think that that looks great. We're gonna go in the center with a little bit of acorn and then we're gonna let everything dry and it does dry back quite a bit and you will see the acorn color in the center. Now for the little berries, I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to add some stickles just to make them shimmer and shine because I find that acorn color actually looks like gold and that looks really pretty. Take a look at that. Isn't that a nice vibrant red flower? Now, don't forget, use mild soap when washing your stencils. Okay, so everything is nice and dry. I had to let the stickles dry on this image right here. And also I did the splatter and I had to let those dry. I did go ahead and I did stamp my sentiment using mist. Now you can still stamp it using pine, but I thought it was an alternative. And don't be afraid to bring back your Misty. So you can see here that I brought back my Misty and once everything was dry, I stamped my sentiment right on it. And the reason for that is because I had those gold splatters and I just wanted that image to be nice and crisp. So I went over maybe two times and that seemed to have done the trick. So now for this image here again, it's all full of 3D foam tape. We're going to add it right here and I'm going to add my sprigs to it and then our sparkles. So we're going to go ahead quickly and just do that. So this is 
the completed card. And we're going to move quickly to this one here, and then we'll do a project recap. So same thing here. I did all of the splatters. I let everything dry. I brought this back into my Misty so that I have a nice, crisp sentiment. And it was done using Mist. I really like the shimmer on this one. So we're going to add a couple of gems. Again, by the sentiment right here just really highlights the sentiment and why not we have one left i'll add one right up here and that's the completed card well here are the completed cards i have one more set to do but i think you'll agree that layered stencils are so much fun and easy to use and the cards turn out really really pretty every single time i hope that you've picked up something helpful here today if you did don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up that's it for me today have yourself a wonderful week bye for now